Hi, this is Vessel from Chaos. In this video, we are going to create a repeating pattern of tiles using the NMesh modifier and the V-Ray GPU. First, we'll start by creating an object to serve as our tile. Next, we'll use the NMesh modifier to scatter the tiles in a grid pattern across the wall. After that, we can set up and apply a material for the tiles. We can make use of the V-Ray multi subtext node to load a bunch of different images to use randomly on the different tiles. And finally, we'll render a short fly-through camera animation on the V-Ray GPU. We'll take advantage of the faster rendering of image sequences thanks to the caching of textures and reusing them instead of reloading them for each frame. With all that being said, let's get started. For the sake of this demonstration, I have put together a small kitchen scene. All of the assets came from the Chaos Cosmos asset library. The lighting is a generic V-Ray Sun and Sky system. So instead of having just a plain white wall behind the kitchen counter, we can create a wall of tiles, which would make our room here look more interesting. Now you can create any kind of object that is of repetitive nature and use the NMesh modifier to tile it around, or in other words, create a repetitive pattern. There are even some preset patterns in the Chaos Cosmos library under the NMesh pattern category. There are all sorts of wire fences, brick patterns, even sofa cushion patterns. We can of course make our own pattern if we need to. So let's do that. We can go for something really simple here. This way we can save on time, but feel free to experiment and create much more complex and interesting patterns on your own. I was thinking of having a relatively small sized square shaped tiles. Each of them could have a different image printed on it. So this way it could look like some sort of mosaic pattern going on when looked from a distance. We can start by creating a simple box primitive. Set its size to let's say 5 cm for the length and width and give it like half a centimeter for the height. I'll convert it to an editable poly object and delete the polygon on the bottom since it's not going to be needed. Great! Now I can add some edge chamfering by going into edge mode select all of the edges and simply use the chamfer tool. I'll add a small chamfer amount and also increase the segments to 2. Good! This will work nicely for our tile pattern. We need to make a plane primitive on which we are going to scatter the tiles. I'll go ahead and create a plane using the auto grid option. This way I can automatically align the plane with the wall. I'll make it slightly bigger. Let's do 300 by 300 centimeters. I'll place it somewhat in the middle of the image and also move it slightly towards the camera. This way it won't interfere with the wall behind it. Now let's add a V-Ray NMesh mod from the modifier list. I'll add the tile we've just created to the object section. In the crop box size section, the values for X, Y and Z are exactly the same as the size of the tile object. We can extend the size of the crop box ever so slightly. This way, the tiles won't be placed right next to each other, but there would be a small gap between them. Also, let's enable the Use Mesh UVW Mapping option to make sure we'll use the tile UVs instead of the ones of the plane. I'll make sure our render engine is set to V-Ray GPU and start the interactive rendering. Great! You can clearly see the grid of tiles that we've got. We can use the tiling U and V values located under the surface parameters rollout to change the number of tiles we get. By default, those values are set to 5, so the tiles are pretty big. Let's try out different values to see how they change. Maybe 15. Not bad at all. But as I mentioned earlier, I'd like relatively small tiles, so I'll increase the tiling even more to 50. Nice! That is about the right size. Let's go ahead and set up a material for the tiles next. I'll open the material editor and bring in a standard V-Ray material. As I have the end mesh plane still selected, I'll go ahead and apply the material. First, I'll enable reflections by setting the reflection color to white. At this point, I can leave the default reflection glossiness value of 1 because the tiles look pretty good this way. But I'm actually going for a more of a blurry type of reflection. So I'll lower the glossiness amount to 0.75. Good! Now let's address the diffuse component. 
Currently, it has a mid-gray value, but what I'd like to do is randomly use different images on the different tiles. To accomplish that, we can use a V-Ray Multisub Text Node and plug it into the Diffuse slot. The Multisub Text Node allows us to randomize solid colors or textures on each object or face or material ID and so on. That's perfect for our case here, because that is exactly what we're trying to do. We can adjust the number of available slots, it has 20 by default, and then plug in the texture nodes accordingly. Loading a bunch of textures one by one could be incredibly frustrating and inefficient, so we can take advantage of the batch load functionality built into the multi-sub text node. I have a folder filled with just random images of coffee related stuff, so I'll select all of the images and load them. Great! You might be wondering why we get only one image showing on all of the tiles. And that is because we need to get ID from random instead of the default face material ID option. Now we need to specify how we would like to randomize it by name, by element, by object ID. Since we want every single tile to be getting a random image, we can randomize it by instance ID. And there it is. We can randomize the hue, saturation and gamma as well if that's the look we are after. It could lead to some interesting results, but in our case here, I'll keep it simple. One last trick that could make our image here better is to desaturate the color of the images. Right now, it's a bit too colorful and busy. So to do that, we can simply insert a color correct node in between the multi-sub text node and the material itself. And let's decrease the saturation by half. Also, maybe decrease the contrast slightly. I think this looks much better. Now that we have all of the tiles set up, we can do a final render. I have animated the camera to have a little fly through animation. I'll render the entire sequence of 150 frames using the V-Ray GPU engine with the default settings. As of version 6.2, V-Ray GPU caches images between animation frames. This way, it doesn't need to reload all of the textures, which leads to a substantial increase in the rendering speed. This is a great addition to the V-Ray GPU engine and especially helpful in scenes containing a large number of bitmaps. This animation sequence of 150 frames has taken 5 hours and 2 minutes to render on a single machine using one NVIDIA RTX 4090 GPU. For the sake of comparison, I have rendered the same sequence on the same machine using a version of V-Ray prior to 6.2. The result was 10 hours 28 minutes to complete. So that is a great speed improvement. In this video, we went over the process of creating a repeating pattern of tiles using the V-Ray and Mesh modifier. We started with modeling a simple object to serve as our tile. After that, we proceeded to setting up the V-Ray and Mesh modifier. We've created a material for the tiles in which each tile was getting a random texture. We've used the NMesh modifier to create a wall of tiles, but we could use it on any curved surface as well to create much more complicated objects. I've used the tile we've just created on a small elephant figure to demonstrate one use case. You could use it on all sorts of objects such as clothes or curtains where creating a weave pattern would be a challenge otherwise. Finally, we finished by rendering an animation sequence using the V-Ray GPU render engine and took full advantage of the new functionality of caching bitmaps between frames while rendering animation. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful and helpful. Thank you for watching.